We've got more now on that large Chinese balloon that sailed across the U.S. and across part of Canada. The Pentagon is accusing China of spying while Beijing has issued firm denials. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken abruptly canceled a high-stakes trip to the country aimed at easing U.S.-China tensions. Meanwhile, Ottawa has not yet said whether the suspected spy balloon, they have not said, however, we do have significant reports that it, that it has gone over Canadian airspace. NORAD, the Canadian Armed Forces, the Department of National Defence and other partners have been assessing the situation and working in close coordination. Canada's intelligence agencies are working with American partners and we continue to take all necessary measures to safeguard Canada from foreign intelligence threats. We take this very seriously. Guy Saint-Jacques served as Canada's ambassador to China and joins us now. Thank you very much for speaking with us. I just want to start with your take. What do you make of this and how serious is it? <clears throat> of course, it's a serious uh, incident, but I think uh, what I gather from what the Chinese have said and what, what uh, the Pen Pentagon has said is that, uh, in fact, this is uh, uh, indeed, <clears throat> a balloon that was used for meteorological purposes uh, with uh, scientific instruments and that uh, uh, unfortunately drifted uh, uh, away from its uh, planned uh, route and ended up flying over Alaska, Canada, and uh, getting to the United States. But uh, and, uh, to confirm that, I would just uh, comment that uh, the uh, official spokesperson for the Chinese Ministry of Foreign Affairs has expressed regrets and in Diplomatic language, when you express regrets, this is pretty strong. Uh, although this raised the question, if it's a, it, it's a mistake, and the Chinese knew that, uh, because they know uh, the prevailing winds, they knew that it was coming to, to come on this side of the planet, why did they did not uh, give a heads up to, the, to Canada and the United States that this was coming? Or why did they not activate... Uh, a self-destructive uh, 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 feature on the on this balloon, uh, and, and and of course when you look at the uh, the path of this balloon, it ended up over a very sensitive site in Montana, one of the three most important uh, uh, ballistic missiles of the United States. So I think that you know it's normal for uh, Canada and the United States to uh, continue to press uh, China for more details. Um, one thing that you said right there really stood out to me, saying, you know, for China to express regret, um, that's pretty rare. Am I, am I reading too much into that? That's a rare thing, right? It, it's, it's very rare. And I think that, in fact, someone uh, will get it, uh, his or her knuckles uh, uh, in, a, in bad shape because this is happening at a very bad moment uh, for uh, President Xi Jinping. Uh, uh, in the last uh, few months, he, he has been forced to put uh, some water in his wine because the economic sit situation of China is very bad, and he has tried to restore uh, some dialogue with the United States. He met with uh, President uh, Biden in Bali at the G20 summit. Uh, and, of course, the Chinese were hoping that the visit, uh, the, the planned uh, visit uh, of uh, Secretary uh, uh, Blinken to uh, to Beijing early next week would help to restore uh, a minimum amount of dialogue on issues, very critical issues like Taiwan. And so it's like if someone on, on the Chinese side almost did this on, on purpose uh, to make the president lose face, uh, to, to create a, a further problem for him, because, of course, as we have seen, Blinken has canceled his, uh, his visit. We don't know when it will take place. Uh, and, and this will uh, uh, create new tensions in the relationship. I was going to say, this is already a difficult moment in that relationship. What does this further do to that U.S.-China relationship? And I'll ask about the Canadian aspect of that, but what does this do? Well, <clears throat> uh, for sure, it won't make uh, things uh, uh, any easier. Uh, we have seen that President Biden is following a much tougher policy towards China than uh, the previous president, uh, President Trump. We see also that uh, there is a new uh, uh, House committee, that, uh, a select committee that has been created by uh, uh, the, the Speaker of the House, Mr. McCarthy, uh, specifically to address uh, China. So this committee is going to 
to put more pressure on President uh, Biden. And of course, uh, you know, we have heard of uh, uh, U.S. generals uh, saying that, in fact, they would not be surprised if uh, China were to attack Taiwan by 2025. And, and that's why we are at the stage where we need more diplomatic uh, encounters, discussions to try to clarify respective positions. Uh, otherwise, in the absence of that, you know, we can be living with a, a self-fulfilling uh, prophecy with uh, tensions building up in the Taiwan Strait, and that could lead to, uh, to conflict. So what does this do the, to the China-Canada relationship then? Well, of, of course, the Canada-China relationship uh, is, uh, is uh, already uh, at a low ebb. Of course, uh, it won't uh, improve the relationship. I'm glad that Ottawa called in Ambassador Chong to explain what was happening. I would like also to know more about when did uh, our uh, armed forces uh, learn about uh, this balloon drifting. Uh, was it uh, something that was uh, uh, spotted early on? Because as, when you look at the map at the, at the path of the balloon, it came over uh, Alaska, drifted over British Columbia uh, exited uh, uh, Alberta, entered uh, Montana. Uh, and of course, why didn't uh, nobody uh, speak about it? Uh, were, were there discussions uh, under NORAD uh, with the Americans and that it, it was uh, agreed that it would be left to the Americans to speak about this? So uh, many questions there. The only sort of clear timeline that we can sort of piece together at this point is that uh, the spokesperson for the White House, the White House press secretary, told reporters uh, during a trip with Joe Biden today uh, that the president was briefed on Tuesday. I'm still trying to get clarity from sources here in Canada as whether it was to Wednesday or Tuesday. I, I, I believe it was Tuesday, but I'm still waiting for some clarity that it was Tuesday that everyone first was like, hey, what's going on? What's this thing? And uh, I have been told by sources that Canadian and American officials were having immediate conversations about it. Uh, but again, we still need we still need people to come out and talk about it so we, we know a little bit more. Um, one thing that we talked about uh, just moments ago before you joined us here was one of our colleagues on the power panel pointed out that, you know, uh, there isn't a lot of trust when it comes to China. We, we know that there have been a number of uh, nefarious actions um, that, that have caused distress all around the world. Um, and one point that uh, one of my colleagues made was that, OK, if this is the big shiny object that everyone is supposed to be paying attention to, to, is, the, is there the possibility that there's something else China's up to in the background and that this is a distraction from? Is that something you think could be a, a concern here? <clears throat> well, uh, <clears throat> I don't think so. And again, it's because, uh, you know, China is in a difficult situation right now. The, you know, the abrupt cancellation of the zero COVID uh, strategy has created, uh, you know, uh, uh, lots of, uh, of death. Uh, President Xi Jinping has been uh, criticized by this. Uh, we will never uh, know for sure how many people uh, died, but the, he is uh, desperately trying to relaunch the economy. Uh, the, real ex uh, the, the banks have been told to uh, relax uh, their attitude towards uh, the, the real estate developers, that to, to extend loans, to offer lower uh, mortgage rates to uh, first-time owners. Uh, and the, he, he, the president uh, does not need another uh, problem at this stage. Uh, the relationship with the U.S. Uh, uh, has been uh, quite bad for, the, for, uh, for some time now, and he, he needs to make progress. And for them, you know, if they had sent this uh, balloon for spying purposes, well, it, it would have been clearly... Uh, to provoke the United, and I, I, I would not be able to understand why they would have done this because it's a, a shiny object, it's a big object that can be seen with the naked eye, and it would make no sense. So, I, I for once, I tend to believe the explanation that was uh, given by the official spokesperson that it, this was uh, an honest uh, mistake. But again, uh, I suspect that uh, a number of people will be punished in China because the. Uh, they didn't take action to uh, to stop this balloon from uh, drifting into uh, U.S. Uh, and then Canadian airspace and then back into U.S. airspace. All right. Uh, Guy Saint-Jacques, a, a former Canadian ambassador to China, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you.